I'm Ayanda Nyati, marking day five of the intra-African trade fair that's being held here at the Durban ICC. And a big part of today's focus is around trying to harness the creative and cultural industries that are spread throughout the African continent. You remember, a big part of what the trade is about is ensuring that there's greater collaboration across various sectors that are represented here, from business to automotive and sometimes even to the entertainment and cultural sectors. And so we decided to take a moment to hone in on what role literature has to play and for that let's bring in our guest uh, DK Chukwemerimbe who is uh, I guess among the people who are here to at least at the very least showcase what we can do in merging what literature is about but first let me acknowledge how to pronounce your same name correctly as a start <laughs> before we go anywhere else thank you so much for speaking to us thank you the name is DK Chukwemerimbe it's a pleasure to be here lovely thank you for for coming through so you know language in and of itself is always such an interesting phenomenon I mean it's considered to sometimes contain power it's able to shift uh, politics in some instances help us place what you're hoping um, we could do with language at least at a fair like this uh, language is, is terribly important like you just said uh, and when wielded by an artist or a creative it has that ability to bypass the brain to bypass the he head mm. and speak straight to the heart of people and when it comes to changing people changing mindsets changing narratives it's important to speak to to emotions, to mindsets, so that you can actually get people to move. That's why it's called emotion, because yeah. it energizes you for motion. It's not enough to have intellectual conversations, because people tend to simply defend their positions. But when you're able to speak to the heart, then you're really able to get people to change. And for Africa and African development, it's very important to get people thinking in the right direction. That's what eventually manifests in, in economic and political development. Right. Often enough, when we speak about trade on the African continent, a lot of people don't really think about entertainment and literature as you know, some of the sectors to be considered for that trade to take place. Are you getting a sense that there's a greater recognition of these sectors, at least at a fair like this? There's definitely greater recognition. First, of the creative sector in its own right. right. There's no capacity to create jobs and build bridges across the African continent. And we're seeing uh, the wonderful things that many sub-sectors in the creative sector is doing across the continent. So there's a greater recognition of, of the fact that it's a, se a sector, a profitable sector in its own right. Mm -hmm. But then there is also growing recognition of the power to be harnessed from creatives in terms of, I mean, African trade is still quite low. 15% of, of the entire trade is intra-African trade. So there's a need to get people to trade more with each other. There's a need to get people to cross those boundaries, to pull down those walls that separate us as Africans. And this is something else the creative is able to do, is able to support that campaign, support that movement by speaking in ways that are effective. So when you have creatives that are conscious and whose material is socially conscious, then it's a power that can be harnessed by policymakers to drive that agenda across the continent. Speak to us about how much collaboration you feel is taking place among creatives on the continent, though. I mean, you know, we had listened to talks around how um, Nollywood, for instance, in Nigeria has done really well, and whether, you know, in some respects they've been able to provide a blueprint for how filmmaking can take place elsewhere on the continent. Are you getting a sense that that cross-pollination is happening effectively enough? Um, I mean, there's always room for improvement, yeah. but that cross-pollination is happening. Nollywood, like you mentioned, is an inspiration to many other film industries across the continent. So people are able to look over the wall and see what are these guys doing in Nigeria and how can we, what can we adapt, what can we take from them to sort of further evolve the industry. Uh, in literature, there are lots of festivals that take place across the continent. And you have people from South Africa coming from Nigeria, coming to Nigeria, people from Morocco going to Kenya. And these sort of pots of cross-pollination only help because diversity drives uh, creativity. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely happening already, but there's always room for improvement. It's, it's difficult to get around Africa. I came here from Nigeria, and it's easier to go to London from Abuja than to come to Durban. Sure. It takes two days of traveling. So things like that have to be broken down. So it's even easier for young creatives to connect with each other across the continent. Speaking of young creatives, there is also a great call for a need to get a whole lot more new voices on the form. I mean, often we speak about the Ngungu Atiogos, we speak about uh, Gino Achebes, you know, classical writers who have their place, but, you know, are you getting a sense that the space is open 
for new voices to also get into the mix, but not only that, but also to get the backing and recognition that they need to cross borders with their work. Africa is full of talent. At the grassroots, there are so many new talents coming out. I work with uh, sort of grassroots organizations in the city of Abuja where I live, and I see talents every, every single day. Uh, the problem is sort of getting up, yeah. uh, getting out of your local city onto the national level, the continental level, the global level. We haven't yet built the infrastructure that allow our grassroots talent is to, to rise. So we, we, we're still in a situation where the world sort of picks one or two token Africans to represent an industry. So we need to sort of expand that gateway so that more of these young talents are coming through. And it's about governments recognizing the importance of the arts and recognizing the importance of the creative sector and investing in it, creating the spaces for creatives to flourish, uh, giving them grants, giving them the time to create, supporting them in all these other ways. So yeah, it, it, yeah. that is needed. You and I can sit here and, and talk until essentially the sun sets, but I know you're a poet yourself. Yeah. Um, you've given us the honor of actually performing one of those uh, poems for us. Before that, tell us about it, why you've written it, and of course what you're hoping people will take from that poem. Uh, the poem is titled The Revolution Has No Tribe, and uh, it's written from a Pan-Africanist uh, perspe perspective, yeah. and it's about inspiring us as Africans to come together to build up our continent. All right, all right. Without any further ado, I'm sure many people will be keen to hear how you use your words, at the very least, to drive home that message. So I'm going to allow you to put your mic down, Thank to you. step forward, um, uh, so that you can prepare for that performance. And it's certainly a strong message to be sent around how we use words, at the very least, to bring Africans together. DK, it's over to you. Do you not know that poverty is not from Soweto? He'll not spare the rest of us and afflict only those, those from Maputo. He'll step across the river and come across the border. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do you not know that corruption is not a Nigerian? He'll not spare the rest of us and kill only the Ghanaian. He'll wake up all of our children at night with hunger. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do you not know that extremism is not Swana? He'll not spare the rest of us and consume only the Nyanja. He'll set the land ablaze from the Cape to the Sahara. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do you not know that our enemies have no face, they are indigents of no state, they come from no place, and if this boat capsizes, every one of us will go under. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do not say, I am the Baobab, when the forest is burning. Do not say, I am the Iroko, when the forest is burning. These borders and boundaries will not prevent us from perishing together. So when the drums sound, Africa, Mikuna answer. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. DK Chukume, Chukume Rije. There you go. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. An author and a poet right here at the Inter African Trade Fair, getting us a sense of how we could use literature, words, rhythm, and rhymes at the very least to drive home what actually underpins the African continent of free trade area, which is greater collaboration across various sectors on the continent, including for the creative industry.